Hey guys, so yeah, sorry that I am not in my professional looking setup right now. I'm really tired. I just actually got done two feeding, but yeah, in this video, I'm actually going to be teaching you guys how to do two feeding, but as of right now, I'm laying in my bed just because I am tired as hell, but I will try my best to actually uh, get on with the process on two feedings. So, all right, guys, so yeah, part number one is uh, I'm going to talk about with size tubes, okay? So, with the sizes that I like to recommend is usually around sizes five to eight. And sizes eight, I recommend for actual like really beginners and uh, newbies, literally, uh, just because uh, the tube is big enough. So that uh, that way, if you were to go inside the trachea, um, it wouldn't let you. It, uh, the tube is big enough for you to prevent from going inside the trachea, which goes towards the lungs, and therefore you cannot inject. And yeah, um, because if you inject inside the lungs, you can drown the puppy and possibly kill the puppy. And yeah, and or maybe get pneumonia, which is uh, AKA infected lungs. If you do not do that, if you do it wrong, that's what happens. So you can possibly kill the puppy pretty much. It's, it's bad if you don't know what you're doing. So that's a size eight for you. Size eight is pretty good for beginners. Uh, I also recommend sizes five. Sizes five is pretty good uh, to use. Uh, me personally, I like to use size five uh, for puppies that are newborns to like uh, one week old, and then after that, I switch to a size eight. Uh, there is a size three and a half. I have tried that, but with me, I do not like it because it seems like it's too small. It seems like it should be used for like little rats, literally, because they're so fucking small. But uh, yeah. Um, and also, like, I think it's too small where uh, if you, you think you're safe, like, you can possibly go into the trachea and you think you're safe and it's not good. And then once you inject, um, it, it, you can kill the puppy pretty much. So it's not good. I don't like the size three and a half. So with me, guys, I like to stick with a size five or an eight. Uh, it's, re it's a really good range to actually uh, start with. So part number two we can get on with the uh the types of formula to use okay so with me guys i like to use uh puppy milk that's uh yeah pretty much uh any any kind of powder or liquid that's formulated milk made for puppies um i have tried Mayenberg goat milk and uh, goat milk but with me i have i felt like i was not successful with it as like other breeders other breeders had success with it but with me i i personally don't like it my puppies didn't grow as fast and also like goat milks it's it's not high as in protein such as with with dog milk you know so dog milk is usually like 43 percent protein well um uh, yeah and stuff like that and it's it's just pretty much higher in protein and therefore your your puppies grow faster which i would like and you know if it, they grow at a good rate too so it's not like a fast rate you know it's made for puppies so with me guys i think i personally would rather stay away from goat milk you know you can use temporarily but in a long-term result um i would i wouldn't recommend it uh with me I, my puppies actually had diarrhea and they actually got a little sick from it and uh possibly um either coccidia or fading puppy syndrome was what i had and uh pretty much the vet pretty much said that uh this recent litter that i'm just doing right now but they, they were gonna die but i actually managed to revive them from the from the brink of death so this is pretty much why i'm teaching this video to you guys and then uh yeah so stay with uh, either powder go uh puppy milk or liquid go um puppy milk so that is pros and cons of each so it doesn't really matter what you choose just make sure you read the label at the back okay so that's part number two done okay. yeah i forgot to actually mention uh when you know how much to actually give the puppies is what i can say i consider the one cc per ounce method so let's say for example your puppy weighs around like 7.9 ounces correct if the puppy weighs 7.9 ounces when you weigh it on the uh the gram scale the ounce scale um that means you can pretty much use 7.9 cc's or aka milliliters of milk uh to the puppy pretty much but okay okay but only okay listen to me only use this method when the puppies are around a little bit older than a couple of days old so let's say for example you know i only use this method you guys i only use this method when the puppies are like around four to five days old uh even sometimes later you just have to test 
um, test feel the puppy's um, you know, abdomen, like right here, and see if it's like parallel to its ribs right here. If you know, if every two feeding, you know, I always recommend you guys to always feel this uh, the puppy's stomach to see if it's parallel to its stomach. If it's a little bit more rounded, you know, that's that's totally fine. You're 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 on the right path, but. Um, I actually like to keep it, you know, just parallel. They're only like, uh, you know, a day old, two days old, three days old. It don't matter um, because the puppy's stomach, guys, it's not big enough yet to actually really apply that one cc per ounce method, if you know what I mean. So if a puppy is day old, like if you're feeding the puppies and they're a day old, like a day old, don't do it you know sometimes you can overfill the puppy's stomach and it's not going to be like a deal breaker where the puppy's going to you know drown no it's just it's just too much where it comes back up in the esophagus or the puppy can can throw it up and stuff like that or regurgitate and stuff so always remember okay only apply this one cc per ounce method so 7.8 ounces or 7.9 cc's to the puppy only if the puppy is like around days you know four to five and older is what i actually recommend but you can actually test it for yourself because every puppy is different um some puppies i do it at you know days three instead you know if they need it because mama's milk hasn't come in yet and some puppies they actually their stomachs are not big enough until they're like days six or seven it, you know it all depends so you just have to test it yourself and always feel the puppy's you know abdomen first uh, it, it's side to see if it's parallel to its stomach and if it's a little if it's a little less if it's not parallel It's totally okay. You know, it's always better to give less than to give too much if you know what I mean so hopefully you guys understand that and um, You know just rewatch this part you guys, you know Can't keep up with me, but I just want to get on with the video because it's about a day later <laughs> So I just wanted to add that to this part of the video. So all right guys, let's get back on to the video All right, love y'all. Right, so yeah, when it actually comes with measuring or feeding the, the puppy the tube beforehand You always want to make sure you measure the tube correctly. So actually let me let me bring out my damn tube out So go right here. So okay, so I'm gonna start with the tube and always start from the last rib. Let's just pretend that I'm a puppy, right? So uh, this uh, my last rib right here. You always want to make sure and then we're gonna get right on So make sure it's always like full in contact You can even start from the bottom of the puppy too or from the side It does not really matter as you guys. See. I'll show you guys in the clip right here um, So as you guys can see right here, you know, I'm measuring the puppy from the last rib, right? Measure from the puppy from the last rib from the side or from the bottom. It don't matter and I always want to make sure, you know, I'm always like full in contact with the puppy, right? And there's no arching of the catheter or aka tube at all. No arching, no nothing at all. You know, you always want to have full contact with the skin at all times. So that way it can be uh, the distance measured when you mark it. It's always going to be precise and, uh, you know, it's it's correct. So, so I'm going to show it to you guys right here in the real life example right here with me. So let's say, for example, like my tube right here from the last rib. It's gonna be right here. I always have full in contact like this, and then we're gonna measure from right here to my mouth, like this. So it's not gonna be like this. You guys see, it's not gonna be like this. It's actually gonna be like this instead. So that way it's more accurate, right? So I always wanna do that, but it's always with me, I like to recommend do it from the uh, do it from the side instead. So just like this, boom. And it should be right there. And then let's just pretend the catheter is right there too. And then right there, I'm just going to mark it. So as you guys see it there, you know, with the clip with the puppy, you know, that's pretty much how it's done. You know, don't overcomplicate it. But at the same time, you always want to make it, you know, make sure it's good too. So, but when you feed the puppy, you can actually pass the black mark too. And it should be fine too as well. Just don't poke it too hard and just make sure everything's all smooth. And yeah, let's get back on with uh, my video. All right, guys. Part number three that I can actually talk about is actually doing the procedure of you know doing the uh doing the uh tooth feeding so with me guys my my rule number one is you guys see in this clip of the video always make sure man when i am doing this always like listen to me right now rule number one every time you put the tube in and stuff like that you always want to make sure it is smooth as hell Make sure it is smooth. If you feel any type of stopping point, some pressure, or some, or you just feel any type of resistance, get the fuck out. God damn. Please what? just get out because you can possibly get into the trachea and it's just not going to let you go in. Because sometimes you can see the puppy gag and it's not good. It's not good. Sometimes, like, 
you want to make sure like it's good all the way so like you have to insert it inside the uh, software as, as you guys have seen in this clip i have many clips right here i got the newborn clips right here i'll show you guys the newborn clips right here and sometimes it takes me a while you know i and uh, i'll show you guys here with the with the the older ones these guys are, are, are like three weeks right now and it takes a little while you know me doing it alone and i recommend you guys you know to have two people to actually do it but if you're just doing it by yourself like me right here it you know it takes a little bit and uh yes yeah, sometimes uh, i might have to renew the milk as well uh just uh, just a good tip to know uh, always make sure the milk is uh, a little you know above room temperature do not give it to them cold as you guys see here i have a uh, baby bottle warmer but always make sure when you insert it in it is always smooth that's my rule number one right there it has to be smooth if you feel any type of pressure or resistance get the fuck out okay remember that and then rule number two i can say is is what i actually call in my term is the rebound method or like a vacuum as you guys can see here i'm vacuuming it and then it comes it, you know i suck it and it comes back up i suck it and it comes back right at the same spot you should know that it should be in the stomach if you've done it right just always follow rule number one and uh this is pretty much like a double check method with me and yeah because if you're inside the stomach if you are inside the stomach, it pretty much, uh, you know, it rebound. It should rebound back unless there's like contents, like milk contents in there, or. Um, but if you're inside the lungs, right, uh, you can suck up air instead. So it's just a double check method that I actually use. It won't hurt the puppy, but just don't, t just don't do it too fucking hard, you know, like fucking jamming that, like sucking that bitch in. But uh, yeah, that's uh, my double check method triple check method i can actually say to you guys is pretty much um if the puppy is whining or the puppy is like crying or breathing correctly and you know you can you can you guys you guys can put the puppy or you know right next to your ear and see if it's breathing right or if it's crying you can make it cry you can pinch it and or you can hold the head because puppies don't like that shit and you could do that and if the puppy whines you most likely should be good so Always remember that because if you if just, uh, you know, if you're using a size five or eight, but if you're using a size three and a half for these for these guys right here, it's it's not good because, as I said, as I explained it to you guys earlier, if you use, a, if you use a size three and a half and you, you think it's good because the puppy's whining, well, you could be wrong because the tube's just small enough to go inside the lungs instead. So, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much it that i wanted to tell you guys that's pretty much all you have to know literally when it comes to doing this and i'll show you guys a couple of clips too so uh let's actually summarize that when it comes with uh doing the two feeding uh rule number one make sure it is smooth and there is no stopping point or resistance at all and make sure it is going in smoothly and you hit that black tip right you hit that black tip uh, where you marked it at earlier, you know, from from the, the the last rib to the mouth, you should be good. You should be fine. And because if you were into the, going to the lungs, well, you should not be able to reach that point anyway. So that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, rule number two, you can use the vacuum method. This is optional. It's optional. You know, vacuum method, you suck it up. It comes back at right at the same spot at the same CC. You should be good. And then rule number three that I can say is make sure the puppy cries and whines or blah, 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 blah or, you know, breathe. You know, it should sound it should sound good. There's no hesitance of no difficulties in breathing. You know, it should always sound like it should sound something like that. Like, it should sound like that so hopefully that was really helpful for you guys if you guys have any questions man uh feel free to comment down in the sections below as of right now as you guys see you know i look a little messed up i'm tired and you know just staying up and i finally got some sleep earlier but i need more sleep so i'm uh, gonna edit this on my phone i don't feel like doing it on my computer um but yeah hopefully that does help and uh yeah if you guys still have any more questions man uh you can text my number personally or you can call me or maybe if you are doing it you can facetime me as well you know i don't mind you know i do this shit for free i just want to make sure i help you guys out pretty much in in this journey of breeding or whelping puppies man it's 
it's a difficult it's a it's a difficult one man because as you guys didn't know the reason why i'm teaching you guys this now or teaching you 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 the people or my subscribers as well is because i lost puppies back in uh, 2020 and you know it was an experience for me man and i was heartbroken over that and i do not want anybody to be heartbroken or felt the way that i did you know because i want you guys to teach I want you guys to learn uh, my experiences with uh, learning this and the little details on what can be uh, learned when doing this type of shit. So, all right, guys, that's pretty much it for Two Fading. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that video. And uh, yeah, love you guys so much. And yo, peace out. <laughs>